welcome Nepal. Namaste. And India. Now, ladies, how are you feeling today? All oh, good. Yes. <laughs> have you received any tips from your fellow contestants? Yes, yeah, we have. Yeah, we Our roommates have been telling it was a really good experience and it's really fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to see how it goes. Anyone else? Tips from roommates or tips from team members? <laughs> So let's begin by meeting our first contestant. She is Nepal. I was born in a small town, tucked between the gorgeous mountains of the Himalayas and the lush jungles of the Tadai. Despite being an average kid throughout my early life, I grew up to become the most hardworking student. I went on to study at the most prestigious engineering college in Nepal and graduated to become an architect as a college topper. However, 2018 was the year that took a turn in my life. I decided to take a challenge contrary to what was expected of me, a decision to participate in a beauty pageant. So now, I've embarked upon the biggest challenge of my life yet. To be the Miss World 2018. Essen of Group 12 comes from India. Vanakam. My name is Anukriti Vas and I come from a land that is the home to a great diversity of cultures, languages, religions and beliefs, India. I was born and raised in a small and beautiful village called Ritchie, located in the southern part of the country where we speak Tamil, one of the only surviving classical languages in the world. It was a wholesome childhood with a happy family until one day my father suddenly abandoned us. I was only seven by then. My life, as I had known it until then, changed drastically. Having lost the spine of my family, I was left behind with a very sensitive mother and a younger brother. I joined the National Cadet Corps and became more interested in male-dominated pursuits like athletics and motorbikes. I know what it is to be without a complete family, but I also know what a difference a single person can make. I am Anukriti Vas, Miss India World 2018. I'm truly honored to share my life story and represent my country in Miss World in Sanya. At the start of your video, you referred to yourself as an average student. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by this? So you know, Frankie, how kids, ever since their childhood, they have an interest in sports or art, or they're just good at maths. But I was one of those kids who was extremely mediocre at whatever she did. And I always grew up believing that I did not have any natural talent. So that's what I meant when I said that I was just an average kid. But as I grew up, I realized that hard work could always beat talent. And you know, right now I'm still the same average kid, but I believe that with hard work and dedication, I can be whoever I want to be. What would you say to kids or parents who believe that they are average students or their children are average students? What would you tell them? You know, I'd like to believe that natural talent is just a myth because I was an average kid, like I said. So I'd like to tell them, please let your children know that if they put their heart and their passion into anything, they can achieve anything that they want to achieve in life. Great. Thank you so much, Nepal. No India, how has growing up without a father made you who you are today? Everything that I am today is only through what I've learned from my life experiences, my mistakes, and the circumstances life has put me through. And my father abandoning us when I was only seven years old has turned me into a strong, confident, and independent woman that I am today, and has shown me how courageous a woman could be through my real life superwoman, my mother, as she not just filled my father's shoes perfectly, but also has been the best example of a self-empowered woman. And learning from her as I grew up, I took up the responsibility to become the man of the house, to be able to be a better role model to my younger brother, and also an emotional support to my mother. 
And if it's my mother's unconditional love that kept me going, it is my father's absence that drove me to find the purpose of my life, that is to stand with those who are abandoned by the society just like me. So I truly believe that everything in the world happens for a reason. And it's not the circumstances that define you, but it's how you face it that makes who you are. So, yeah. Thank you, India. And will your mom be coming to the Miss World final? No, she won't be, but her blessings are always with me. Thank you, India. Thank you so much. And Nepal, what is the biggest problem faced by your country and how would you solve it? Unemployment has been one of the biggest challenges that we've been facing as a country as a lot of youth are migrating to foreign countries for job opportunities. So I believe that creating more jobs through tourism, which happens to be one of our biggest strengths as a country, is a way to go about it. I would like to promote to the world that Nepal is a country of diverse culture, ethnicity, and you know religions, traditions, and we are just people who love celebrations, we love festivals, and I'd like to welcome the world to Nepal with big bright smiles. Thank you, Nepal, and thank you everyone. Who is someone from your country that inspires you? In addition to the two strong pillars of my life, my mother and my grandmother, I have been truly inspired by our former president, who is also known as the Missile Man of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who I deeply revered to as a father figure, and his story from being a small town boy who is a newspaper vendor to having an invention on his own name has always given me hopes in life. And his quote that states, a dream is not something that you see when you're sleeping, but it's something that does not let you sleep, has always been my reason to never give up in life. So it would definitely be him. Thank you. Thank you.